No matter how corrupt you think they are, double it and add a sex scandal. That's a good rule to apply these days, because while the world was busy debating just how politically corrupt this Fulton County prosecutor Fannie Willis is for bringing this racketeering case against Trump and company, she was laughing all the way to the bank. Actually, she left the bank a long time ago with a big cash withdrawal for some exotic vacations for which the public paid. Or at least it certainly looks that way, and Fannie Willis is going to have quite a time explaining her way out of it. And so far, she's taking her time to think about exactly how. When I first saw this story break this week, on first glance, I thought it was just some Jerry Springer stuff about marital infidelity, and that certainly is a part of it. But the bigger scandal here is this prosecutor personally enriching herself through this politically corrupt prosecution. She isn't just weaponizing the legal system. She is personally cashing in on it, too. Recall Fannie Willis is the district attorney in Atlanta, leading the sprawling, racketeering prosecution of Trump and 18 other defendants. This is the one where Trump committed those famous overt acts in furtherance of the conspiracy to steal the election, like telling people to watch OANN or Newsmax, with charges recommended by a grand jury led by a forewoman who couldn't even contain her glee not saying what she was obviously saying, looking like she had some kind of neurological disorder. Did you recommend charges against Donald Trump? I really don't want to share something that the judge made a conscious decision not to share. Did the grand jury recommend an indictment of former President Trump? I'm not going to speak on exact indictments. That was the leader of the group that recommended charges. With that sort of voice for reason and clarity, how did this case get twisted into abuse and fraud? Well, that's a question that's probably bunk in its premise, actually, because it's not like Fannie Willis's corruption needs any assist. And she didn't really even bother to hide it, either. In this case, all the clues were hiding in plain sight. All it took was a lawyer smart enough to ask the questions that naturally follow. Fannie Willis is not prosecuting this Trump case herself. In November 2021, she hired Nathan Wade to take the lead on it. Nathan Wade was a little-known personal injury and criminal defense lawyer. Even the New York Times at the time noted he had limited experience trying high-profile cases, much less a complex racketeering case involving multiple high-profile defendants, which is a nice way of saying no experience, actually. At least with felony prosecution, this guy has never prosecuted a single felony case in his life. Odd pick. Odder still... The day after Nathan Wade was selected as special prosecutor in this case, he filed for divorce, and the court sealed the records in that divorce proceeding, apparently not common in Georgia. And this Nathan Wade, at least if this new accusation is correct, never actually submitted an oath to Fulton County, as is required by law. In fact, his hiring as outside counsel by Fannie Willis was not approved by Fulton County commissioners either, as is also required by law. How that oversight was ignored is its own separate question in this scandal. Okay, so why would some unknown guy with little to no relevant experience be hired through a shady process, hiding his personal finances in a divorce case that he started the day after he got the job? You can see where this is going. He's not here for his legal expertise. He is here for Fanny's Fanny, which may be the biggest scandal of it all, that any self-respecting man would destroy his family and reputation for this particular piece. But in fairness to Nathan Wade, he didn't do it just for that. He did it for the money. And hey, if you can make this kind of cash to go on awesome vacations with just the small burden of satisfying a desperate middle-aged woman a few times along the way, well... Maybe we're all the idiots for working honest jobs instead. These accusations come in a motion to dismiss the case and disqualify Fannie Willis and Nathan Wade from prosecuting it from Trump co-defendant Michael Roman, a former Trump staffer who worked on the 2020 campaign. He's charged in this criminal conspiracy for attempting to organize a slate of alternate electors in Georgia. Ironically, Roman was the only defendant in the case against whom the special grand jury had not recommended charges. Willis pursued anyway. And perhaps she should have listened to that recommendation because now Roman's lawyer has broken the scandal open. Roman's lawyer, Ashley Merchant, had the smarts to follow up on those curiosities. Hey, 
what's up with that obviously unqualified guy's simultaneous divorce? Well, she can't share the records in that case because that case is sealed. But just like Wade himself, she did some poking around and discovered some items of interest. According to sources close to both Nathan Wade and Fannie Willis, these two have had an ongoing personal relationship that started before his selection as special prosecutor. And it appears that through this Trump case, they used the newly obtained money to explore some exotic new settings for those relations. Trips together to Napa Valley, Florida, cruises on Norwegian and Royal Caribbean, and possibly more. Okay, but these were personally financed, right? There's no evidence that the state was billed for these escapades, is there? Well, maybe not directly, but for Nathan Wade's supposed legal services, which, remember, are totally inexperienced and unqualified, the state is paying a massive cost. In his two-plus years as special prosecutor on the case now, the state of Georgia has paid Nathan Wade nearly $654,000, and there's more billing not yet fulfilled, and there's more money coming to his firm through his partners too. And lawyers are expensive, sure, but why is an inexperienced lawyer who just so happens to be sleeping with the DA so especially expensive? For comparison, Fannie Willis herself only earns a salary of just under $200,000 from the state of Georgia. Her office was granted extra funding from the state to catch up on the COVID backlog of cases in 2021, and it appears that she then used that money to pay her boyfriend triple her own salary and effectively pay herself with the benefits, all while politically weaponizing the justice system as well, its own separate scandal, of course. And that weaponization of the justice system remains crucially important because that's one other piece incidentally revealed in this investigation too. In addition to his exotic trips, Nathan Wade took more mundane ones too, but two especially mundane trips for which he billed the state. In the year prior to August's indictment, while Wade was working the case, he took two trips involving the Biden administration, one in May to Athens, Georgia, to meet with White House counsel, and another in November to D.C. to meet with White House officials as well. For what reason does the special prosecutor in a state case need to meet with the federal executive other than to coordinate the prosecution of that executive's top political rival? And if this meeting actually had nothing to do with that prosecution— then why did Nathan Wade bill the travel costs to the state of Georgia as part of his official duties in that prosecution? Now, in fairness, this is all still categorized under big if true for the moment, as in Roman's lawyer has not yet provided concrete evidence for these claims. Documentation of the vacations that they took together. A demonstration that proves that Willis and Wade had a personal relationship that pre-existed his selection as special prosecutor. Roman's lawyer says all of that can be demonstrated if the records in Wade's divorce case are unsealed, which she is seeking to do. So even though it is just what this lawyer says for the moment, does it make sense that she would just make all of that up? That her best legal strategy would be to just lie about the personal lives of the prosecutors in a way that they could just easily counter with the truth? And if Fannie Willis does have the obvious truth that counters this lie on her side, she's going on a week without saying it. Roman's lawyer filed this motion to dismiss the case on Monday. Fannie Willis tells the media she will only respond to the accusations in appropriate court filings. She's made no even generic denial yet. Likewise, Wade isn't talking either. Outside his office on Thursday, a reporter asked him for comment on the scandal. Wade said no and walked away with a gun in his hand. Funny how Democrat support for the Second Amendment suddenly strengthens when their abuses are uncovered. I'm not mad at him for carrying a gun. I just think with all that money, he should carry something flashier, maybe like Saddam's golden AK, something at least on the level with his $100,000 car. But even if they're not talking now, they will have to talk eventually. Fannie Willis is now subpoenaed in Nathan Wade's divorce case. No time set for that deposition yet. And Willis and Wade will, of course, have to respond to Michael Roman's motion to dismiss the case and disqualify them. No time yet set for that consideration either. Where this scandal goes next 
is an open question, but political corruption made this mess, so it will almost certainly play a role in resolving it, too. Roman's lawyer says Willis could be charged with honest services fraud, a federal crime for which a vendor, Wade in this case, gives kickbacks to an employer, Willis. It's also possible that this is a federal racketeering case itself, that Willis and Wade are actually the ones operating a criminal organization. I'd just rather not read that indictment with all the details on those overt acts in furtherance of the conspiracy. Under the sheets is just fine, thanks. We don't need any transparency with her nightwear. Regardless, it's a moot point anyway. The idea that federal prosecutors will correct this criminal matter is as laughable as the corruption itself. This case is facilitated by federal corruption, so in no way will federal corruption ever bring it to justice, which leaves it to the state of Georgia to investigate and prosecute for themselves. I assume if there are federal laws that apply, the state of Georgia has some similar. The only question isn't legal, it's personal. Do they actually have the courage to do it? Or is Georgia exactly the sort of place where the DA actually can hire her grossly unqualified boyfriend and pay him triple her salary to prosecute a bogus politically motivated case so she can sip cruise line cocktails while defrauding the taxpayer to break up a marriage and buy the male attention she rightfully never received? Because if she can get away with this, she can get away with anything, which is... Kind of the point. These people sure act like they can, and who the hell am I to argue otherwise? Because they consistently demonstrate that they do. Thanks, as always, for listening and for supporting Tenet Media. Always appreciate that thoughtful discussion down below. And of course, a like on the video. And hey, if you're new to the channel, consider a subscription as well. We have lots more excellent content to come. You can find more from me at mattchristensenmedia.com. And you're always welcome to coming out and chatting my live streams as well. Those are live on Wednesday and Sunday nights. Looking forward to it. Goodbye.